lecture, we are going to have an overview of the main typologies of production systems. Production systems are intending to turn raw materials into finished products. They can be classified based on three dimensions. First, how we meet customer demand. The choice depends on the lead times. If the delivery lead time required by the customers is lower than the manufacturing lead time, that is the time required to make the products, the manufacturer must produce before receiving the orders. Otherwise, it can decide whether to produce before or after receiving the orders. More in detail, the decoupling point separates the production phases performed before receiving the order from those carried out after. Based on the decoupling point, we can distinguish five types of production systems. In a make-to-stock production system, the goods are made and stored before customer orders are received. It is therefore crucial to be able to forecast customer demand in order to prevent stockouts that lead to poor customer service or extra stocks that lead to high inventory holding costs for the company. Make-to-order systems are largely adopted, for example, in the fast-moving consumer goods industry to produce packaged food, detergents, and so on. In an assembled-to-order production system, a number of standard modules are pre-assembled and stored. Then, after receiving the orders, they are combined together to make the finished products. Assembled to order systems are very diffused in the automotive industry. In a make to order production system, the products are made from raw materials and components after receiving the customer orders. Make to order systems are adopted, for example, in the furniture industry or for producing top level cars. A purchase to order production system is similar to a make to order one, but also the raw materials are bought after receiving the customer orders. The only activity that has already been performed by the company is the product design and engineering. For example, purchase to order systems are adopted for small boats. In an engineer-to-order production system, the company works with the customer to design and then make the product. Engineer-to-order systems are adopted, for example, to make new buildings, plants, large boats and airplanes. Production systems can also be classified based on how the production process is organized. We can have three solutions. Continuous production. The production system is devoted to just one product that is usually produced 24 hours per day without stops. Some examples are the production of paper, glass and mineral water. Batch production. Different products are manufactured in the same system. Batches consist in groups of the same item. For example, we produce 50 units of product A, then 100 units of product B and so on. Single piece production. Every product differs from the previous one. This can be due to the fact that the company makes unique products, strongly customized, for example, airplanes. Moreover, production systems can also be classified based on how the products are made. More specifically, we can distinguish among process production in which the products undergo physical, chemical transformations that are not reversible. Therefore, the original raw materials can't be obtained back from the final products. Some examples are the production of paper, glass, fabric and cakes. Then we have part production, also referred to as manufacturing production, which comprises fabrication and assembly. Fabrication is intended to produce components and parts that are then assembled to obtain the finished products. During fabrication, irreversible physical and morphological transformations are performed, but the original raw materials can usually be recognized in the finished products. Some examples are the production of home appliances, personal computers and cars. 
In order to perform the fabrication phase, the production plant can be organized according to different layouts. The main solutions are job shops and transfer lines. Job shops are manufacturing systems organized in different work centers. In every work center we can find machines that can perform similar activities, for example turning, milling, hobbing and so on. Each product has its own routing that defines a route through several types of machines. Usually there are alternative routes. The management of production flows is therefore quite complex and products spend most of the time waiting in queues leading to high work in progress. As a result, the throughput time is significantly higher than the total time spent on the machines. Despite these limitations, job shops have some advantages. They are usually very flexible and can produce a large mix of items. Moreover, the capital expenditure to set up a job shop system is quite limited if compared to other solutions. In production lines, machines are arranged in stations that are put in a sequential line and each product passes in each station. A line is dedicated to the production of a single product or a product family that is similar products. Production rates are extremely high and work in progress is very limited, but the solution is not flexible and the system is strongly impacted by failures. A failure in a specific station usually stops all the production line. Moreover, to properly design a production line is quite difficult since the cycle time of the stations, that is the time to perform the required activities, should be very similar. As for the assembly phase, we can have three main solutions, fixed position, assembly shops and assembly lines. In the fixed position assembly, the product does not move, while components, tools and workers converge on the assembly site. This solution is suitable for assembling big and heavy objects like aircraft and boats producing small volumes. The assembly shops are similar to job shops since the products move through several assembly centers with different routings. They can be used to assemble a mix of similar products in small medium volumes, for example top-level cars. In assembly lines, all the products go through the same stations. In each station, a specific set of activities is performed. Based on the type of transport between the stations, we can distinguish fixed transfer systems in which the products move from one station to another at fixed times using a line belt. Not constrained transfer systems in which there are small buffers containing work in progress between the stations. Continuous transfer systems in which the products slowly move through the stations without stopping. The workers carry out the required operations while the product is moving. This solution is quite common in the automotive industry. In this lecture, we have seen how to classify production systems according to how to meet customer demand, how to make the products, and how to organize the production process.